guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Friends and Two. In this episode, we're going to be continuing our revolutionary route. Don't worry, we'll get back to the sa uh, salvation route soon enough. Just, 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 like, I, like I mentioned before, there's a few kinks that I have to work out. So I'm just going to continue on from here. Continue to the next volume. In volume one, just like we mentioned in the previous episode of volume one, this route contains content warning for depictions of blood, depictions of death, depictions of a dead body, discussion of institutionalized violence, and there is action sequences. Player discretion is advised. And also, just as a note, I, even though I have played through this once, I kind of already forgot like half of the things that already happened in this. I just remember sort of the, like the main thing that happens near the end of this volume. Explaining how you got here turns out to be a lot trickier than you thought it would, mostly on account of phrases like, well I kind of just did the thing I do, don't really help you to convey your meaning. Tizrek listens calmly as you tell her about another universe that you close off to protect all your friends, about how you brought a bunch of Artanians there, too, just so they could be safe and happy with each other, and about how you really just want to make ev sure everyone is safe. Tizrek snares her eyes. Safe? You think that safety is something I care about anymore? Yes, no, you're not sure the an answer is looking for, honestly. I'm not looking for anything from you. I just want to know why you thought you could show up here like nothing changed. As you're about to enter in the way with it, definitely win her over you, and make it clear that you're just about the best friend ever, you hear a knock on the door followed by a soft cliff of a click of a latch. And there she is, your other two blood W L fr W friend, Stelsa. Why does she look so surprised to see you? Well, hello there. You put on your winning smile and shake a confident pose. Just had to just you just had to head out for a bit to do some stuff but you're back now you certainly are back i'll give you that much i'm not sure what to do with that information hey stealth the friend-shaped entity here was just explaining their big plan for what exactly oh yeah well you see once you got your awesome powers back i think you're so relatively easy to do no big deal then you're going to offer them to take them both with you to the locked timeline you created we take a moment to briefly explain what a lock timeline is in the most direct way you can manage. Sessa's eyes go wry. That's... That's amazing! I can't believe that you were able to do something so incredible! And all by yourself, no less! Why? We'd love to come back to your timeline with you, wouldn't we, ZZ? We can make a whole outing of it! I'll go pack some things and... She trails off looking back and forth between you and Tezzer's. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just that this is awfully convenient. How long has it been? About two sweeps. You remember that from a few minutes ago? Connects in short-term memory under most circumstances. Right. But that was two sweeps where our lives kept going. You know that, right? Of course you do. The thing of it is, you've tried really hard to explain how you this isn't really your fault. The whole thing with Doc Scratch and the fenced plane, and you don't really think this is coming across as an explanation so much as a family excuse. ZZ! Shouldn't we at least listen to what they have to say? Tizzard doesn't respond right away, and she furrows her brows and shakes her head slowly, looking between the faces of her mate Sprite and you. The jerk who left them without so much as a goodbye. I need to talk to you for a minute. Tizzard just so much doesn't so much ask so much ask you come to with ask you to come with her as she roughly pulls you out into the corridor while Sasha looks vaguely confused. She leans up against the wall not far from the door to the room so that the room that she and Sasha are apparently sharing to get, sharing and sigh. You really aren't getting it, are you? You start to protest that you definitely get it in what other sense of that she means, but you stop when she sees your face. Look, two sweeps is a long time. Things are different now than they were. People are different than they were. Speaking of that, you ask her about Darius doing, and you look to ask before you and felt bad about. Oh, Tezra doesn't look at you. I don't know how Daria is, as I haven't been able to talk to her in a sweep. And I've got some other stuff going on. A lot of other stuff, as a matter of fact. And I don't think you'd actually understand what it's like. 
wait a minute, is this about the thing you were saying when you first showed up? The starting fives and misfiling paperwork thing? Tezzeret shifts nervously against the wall and shakes her head. Look, I don't want to talk about it right now, okay? Before you can probe more into more of the specifics of her inter into her, her, her evas evasive and non-answer, you hear someone walking down the hallway. It appears to be Tagora, walking with his hands in his pockets, a frown on his face. You're about to say something when you get a close look at Tezzer's face, and some of you think that maybe now really isn't the time to talk to her. Ah, oh, excellent. You're out here brooding and generally being sullen. What the fuck do you want, Sorgor? Don't you have a hate wedding to plan with your kismasus? Oh, nothing. Just have a quick conversation with a fellow loyal member of the Legis Corpus. You're about to settle into quiet listening mode when Tagora shoots you a withering glare. A conversation I was hoping to have in private, actually. Okay, okay, fine. You know how to take a hint, actually. You wander around the ship a little bit. The corridors you encounter are remarkably similar, actually. And you find yourself quickly getting lost. After some time, you finally make your way into some kind of observation deck. Looking at the large pane window to see Trinia floating there softly against the hard vacuum of space. It almost makes you forget how harsh of a place it really it actually is. Your vaguely ends existential ponderings are cut short when another one of your old friends interrupts. Ah, if it isn't my old friend. The esteemed cultural ambassador from the alien world of... You know, I'm not entirely sure that you actually told me what the name of your planet was. Friends, I use the term in the more in general loose of the sense professional camaraderie, men deep friendship, I hope you don't take offense, culture ambassador. I believe this was the story you told me at the time, although with some hindsight I realized it was a flimsy pretense. Name of, uh, name of your planet. I apologize if it's simply slipped my mind, it's been a few sweeps now. Oh yeah, that! Well, your plan is called Earth. You've actually been hanging out with a different version of it lately, if he knows what that means. Knows what you mean. From his skeptical expression, you think that maybe he doesn't. Indeed. I don't pretend to, but I suppose it's beside the point. That being said, I am happy to see you again. You tell Gallic that you're happy to see him too. You really you really felt feel bad about how long you were gone and all. It wasn't strictly your fault, but then you know also not getting into the whole discussion again. Which is completely fine. I completely understand the need for a certain amount of discretion in one's day-to-day affairs. My work with the Alternian government often requires it. Uh, discretion. Specifically refused to discuss certain key details for various reasons related to safety and confidentiality. His work, unfortunately, not something I'm at liberty to discuss. That's great! You're in the process of asking Gallic what it is that he does for government when the expression glows dark and goes and shakes grows cold and shakes his head. I feel that I already addressed why I can't discuss the specifics. Oh yeah, well, how how, how about this whole wait, hate w wedding thing? What's the deal with the hate wedding? Guy like sigh, slightly rolls his eyes. <sighs> Is Tagora still insisting on calling it that? It's simply that we are forming a legally binding partnership based around our kismisitude that includes various consequences for breaking the contract and other such details. So, legally binding partnership, to refer to the whole thing as a wedding is somewhat reductive, and I will not tolerate reductivism in my relationships. Uh, various consequences, no, it's not a sex thing, and three other such details. I'm gonna say it's mostly just boring legal stuff at this point. It's a fairly standard practice, and it helps ensure that my kismesis is assigned appropriately cushy, non-fatal positions. You look around the observation deck, and you have to agree that Cushy seems like a pretty good way to describe everything here. Congratulate Kagarik on his excellent taste and he smiles at you. Thank you. The ship is mine, of course. Partially for personal use and partially for my work. You're welcome to be here, and you are, of course, welcome to stay for the hate wed- Uh, the ceremony later. For his work, which is previously mentioned, will not be disclosing the details of. Uh, welcome to be here, provided that you behave yourself and don't bother anyone. And the ceremony, I'm going to throttle Gorgor for using that damn phrase. As you're politely listening to Gallic on... Good, listening to Gallic go on about the various things he can't talk about for vague and specific reasons, you hear a loud buzzing tone coming from his pocket. Gallic pulls out his uh, palm husk. <laughs> he pulls out his palm husk and glares down into it. 
Before you can ask what's going on, the palm hug sounds another alert, and Galak's face only gets darker and more concerned. If you'll excuse me, I have an important matter to attend to. As I stated previously, you're welcome on this ship as my guest. Please, make yourself at ease. Galak walks off in a hurry, leaving you st starting once more out the window at the sweeping vista of the stars and the planet below. Once more, you can't help but think how peaceful it all is from up here. It's almost like you can ignore the constant misery from down below and just focus on the natural beauty of it all. If you get, a, you get about 15 minutes into the bout of reflection when you start to get ink, antsy and need to wander the ship some more. After all, Galax said that you were free to wander. Well, okay, maybe not exactly that, but you feel like that the implication was there. Once more, you find yourself traveling through some of the very samey corridors in search of something interesting. You decide against the bridge, Galax's comment about not bothering people stands out in your minds. Instead, you head to the opposite direction toward what you naturally think is as the back of the ship. After a few more minutes, you end up in a large room that looks uh, like it might be a cargo bay of some kind. Maybe it's a vague association in your brain forms between this and your platonic ideal of the postal service, or maybe just your need for adventure. But something calls you out here, uh, calls out to you here, and then you notice that the airlock is at the far end appears to be open. Warning, blood and gore if you cannot see it. Cautiously approach the airlock. This is probably just a mundane thing, probably nothing to worry about. Oh no, a body. Oh crap, no, no, no. This is something to worry about. This is definitely a body. Maybe not a dead body, but the heck, they sure do look dead from the- There's blood everywhere. You think it's pretty unlikely that someone could lose that much blood and still be okay. It's a troll wearing some kind of space suit, and it looks like they're holed up in a safety tether or something. Did they mention that there's a large amount of blood? But that's okay. This is fine. You dealt with blood before. Clearly something's happening here, and you need to do something. Investigate the airlock. Okay, dead bodies totally 100% sure that you have to sleep fine with dead bodies and blood. Holy heck, that's definitely blood. It's all splattered on the floor and keep out and... At some point, you have figured out recently that began to panic. You're shaking and trying to figure out what it is you're seeing. No big deal. You just investigate the keypad over here, and you know, just covered in blood. Not sure if you slipped in the blood or you just started freaking out and tripped over your own feet, but you start to fall for it and accidentally hit the keypad. There's a quick rush of air and suddenly a moment of intense fear of stark, terrifying realization. And then you're floating. In space, no one can hear you whimper. Counts will see you now. Oh, hey, you're back. Nice to see you again. Kinda curious though. Are you here? I didn't mean here here, but because this is merely a place. I mean, why are you back on Ontario in the first place? What exactly do you hope to accomplish through all of this? I want to set my friends free. I'm not admirable, but you're choosing a hard road. You know that, right? Not everyone what you run into is going to be a potential future revolutionary. Sometimes people who suffer under a system defend it because the alternative is accepting that they're also being oppressed. The point of this being, I think you should keep trying. Your journey's just the beginning. It'd be a shame to give up now. Yeah, yeah. Skip, skip, skip. So, actually, maybe not do that. You back slowly out of the airlock. You don't know about how much forensic investigation to begin with, and you're starting to panic. You'll probably end up tripping over your own butt and sending yourself out into the airlock if you try to do anything yourself. And you're heading out to try and find someone with more qualification in the field of figuring out who did the murder, you, you practically bump into Kotagora. What are you going? It's bad enough that I have to deal with everything else today. You can't help but know Sagora seems to be acting in a way that is especially suspicious. Quickly, you put on your junior, your ledger slasher hat, the hat is metaphorical, and prepare to question Tagora. The questions are literal. Well, I don't know what you're doing here, but I don't like it. He seems oddly calm about all this. There you are. I inquired as to your whereabouts, but Tizius was unsure exactly where you'd gone. Fortunately, it is not especially our trip, and there are limited options. What is it? I just needed to... He trails off, and you can see his eyes start over to the open airlock. Slowly, Gallic approaches the door and looks inside. What in the Empress's name is going on here? What? What is it? Gallic looks furious, and he's got his head hands inside of his jacket, hand on s hand on something that you're starting to realize is some kind of pistol. What is the meaning of this? 
Ugh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Gorgor, how could you? I know you hate me, but I didn't realize you hated me to do something like this on my own ship in the middle of what should be a miserably joyous day for both of us. I believe the distinction in this case to be extremely important and a cultural nuance, while subtle, should not be overlooked. Again, the cultural subtleties are there, but I hope not lost on my alien friend here. What the fuck, Sorgor? What were you even doing down here? Tagor backs away nervously, putting his hands up and shaking his head. Honestly, he doesn't really look like someone who's been caught red-handed so much as someone who has no clue what's going on. You don't understand! I just got here! A likely story. The kind of story a rebellion spy would tell. Tagora, the only reason I'm not going to shoot you on the spot is because in spite of everything, I still care about you. If it weren't for my pitch feelings... He doesn't finish his sentence, but you think that he just doesn't really need to. Slowly, Tagora lowers his hands and he just looks deflated now. Fine. Do what you want. He doesn't take long to lock Tagora up in the office he found him in earlier. He doesn't really look too interested in putting up much of a fight at this point. He managed to catch up to Gallic once he's done locking the door. Oh, it's you again. I'm truly sorry that you had to witness such a base display of emotion on my part. I'm simply overwhelmed that my own Kismesis would disrespect me like this. Hey, you're fine, buddy. You're fine. I've been known to sometimes be become overwhelmed, perhaps even off the fly a little bit. And, you know, with the whole murder thing. Gallic sighs and heavily and lowers his head. You can't help but think that right now he looks a little, looks like he very much doesn't want to be, want to be here. I suppose it falls to me to deal with this matter in the prescribed manner. You have a sinking feeling that what he's talking about that involves a bullet to the head. <sighs> Not necessarily. An airlock could also be involved. Any method at all, really. But regardless, I still fall under Imperial law when it comes to these matters. And as an Alternian officer in my own right, I cannot simply ignore it. You're starting to get the idea. You put up a hand. What if you suggest Targora was given the option of a trial? Wouldn't that be a good idea since you're very much in keeping with your Alternian legal system? I suppose. You do understand that Alternian trials are mostly a formality, right? I would simply be delaying the inevitability of my unpleasant duty that would, sadly, still be my responsibility. Formality. This is something that Tagore himself would be painfully familiar with, being a showmaster himself. Basically, the showmaster runs the trial in a way that is intended to be the most dramatic and entertaining spectacle possible. At the end of it all, the defendant is invariably judged to be properly guilty and either summarily executed or, if a tyranny is available, fed to its honorable tyranny. The later practice has fallen somewhat out of favor in that there are fewer and fewer tyrannies hatched in these later days of the, the old empire. You understand that, but what if you could provide some kind of defense? Maybe things are not as they seem. Gallic eyes you skeptically. I suppose that would be acceptable. At least to humor you while I mentally prepare myself for executing my own kismesis. He sighs and shrugs. Very well. You may have run of the ship to conduct whatever investigation you see fit and interview any witnesses. I'll add your biometric data to the ship's scanning system so that you can access the office where Tagore is being held. So, I'll run of the ship. Be cautious when investigating the airlock. I wouldn't want you to accidentally end up in deep space interviewing any witnesses. I believe that T Tezra and Sulla are about, are about if you want their insights in Office where Tagore. I can simply not can bear, cannot bear to call him Gorgor right now. Ga Gallic pulls out his palm husk out of his pocket and swipes a few times on the screen. It chirps softly to indicate that whatever he was just doing worked, you guess? You're still not sure, still not totally clear on how this all this alien technology actually works. There. I will be on the bridge. Please feel free to ask me any questions as pertain to your investigations. Once you're done gathering evidence and interviewing witnesses, we can conduct a proper trial. And then I can get this whole Empress Dan process over with. Well, heck. 
Looks like you're gonna have to try and figure out what the heck is really going on. You don't think it's any think it's especially likely that Tagore actually killed anyone. That doesn't really seem like his speed. You guess you should probably start talking to Tagora given that you're going to be defending him and all that. You should investigate the ship thoroughly and talk to everyone who is involved. Office. We open the door to find your son looking Tagora leaning up against the bookshelf in the corner, eyeing you suspiciously. I'm the gawk at the condemned. Well, no, you explain. Not really. You're actually here to defend him, to provide some kind of chance of maybe not being to Oh, Empress, that's somehow even worse. He'll be fine, buddy. Everything's fine. Relax, take a deep breath. It's gonna be great. Ouch. Well, you're about the only chance he's got right now since no one else seems particularly care to about his... seems to be particularly care about his place. Fair enough. So, what's your brilliant plan? You don't want to, to admit that this is that it's about as far as you've managed to get as far as the actual planning thing. This is it, huh? You haven't actually thought of anything. Well, the thing about it is... Fine. Make this quick. Uh, why was he done with the cargo bay? Tagora narrows his eyes and glares at you, and you're really not getting a very warm and friendly vibe from him. Hey, aren't you friends? You're a dangerous person to be friends with. I'd rather not right now. It's all the same to you. Okay, fine, but you notice that he's completely dodged the question. What was he doing down on the car bug way? Off, acting awfully suspicious, too. I wasn't doing anything, and I don't have to answer to you either. Of course not, but it might be make things tricky as far as the whole preventing Tagora from dying objective. This seems like a pretty important information. It's none of your business what I was doing down there. Maybe you should concentrate on finding out what's going on rather than running around in circles like this. Fine, did you do it? Does it matter? Well, do you explain? Yeah, it kind of does. It's a bit hard to prove his innocence if he wasn't actually innocent. My innocence? Do you honestly think that has anything to do with the outcome here? Tagore laughs in a way that you find it more than a little bit unsubtle. Please. Galax made up his mind, so that's basically it. And that doesn't bother him at all? You're still not completely sure how the whole quadrant thing works, but you're pretty sure that Kesmasis weren't supposed to literally kill each other. Oh, this isn't about our relationship anymore. This is completely inside of his head. You mind yourself that you should look around the room too and see if you can find any clues. Finding clues is one of the things good detectives do. Why, you'd be willing to bet there's even a neat little symbolic representations of bits in the room you can look at. Maybe some sort of magnifying glass? Hmm. Let's see here. Well, there's this. Looking through the books on the shelf, you don't really see anything that would be particularly useful to you. You're still able to recognize most of the writing. The characters are forming intuitively into something you can comprehend. The subject matters on the books, on the other hand, are it's completely beyond your abilities. You're not even going to pretend this stuff is remotely accessible to you. You know what? Not all the flower on turning is a horrific nightmare of teeth and spying hell bent on killing every living organism it encounters. Just a lot of it. But this plant is perfectly normal and harmless. At least right now. Maybe it'll grow up to be a giant friend eating monstrosity one day. But it's not to think about it too much. There's something it's, it's, there's something to be said about the convergent evolution of vastly different worlds that have ensured the university of cute kid and dangling from precariously while encouraging the reader to hang in there. And of course, this being a tyranny, there's probably some horrible catch. The tree is venomous, or the can is venomous, or there's some venomous creature just out of frame. Whatever the case, you're completely certain the ven venom is involved somehow. Uh, but yeah, I think the last thing is this computer. You're pretty sure that Gallic wouldn't just leave to go in, in here if the computer actually gave him a way of connecting to the outside world. And sure enough, it seems like it completely locked out, out without some kind of an administration passcode. You can see a few program icons in the background. Solitaire, some kind of word processing program, and something called Vital Track. But none of, thing, but none of it is actually anything you can open or look at. Anything else? Um, let's head to the bridge. 
walk to the bridge of the ship and you're immediately struck by how quiet it is. You expect a spaceship to have all kinds of humming gizmos and whatnot all over the place, but it's mostly just a few trolls singing in silence and tapping screens. And with this, I'm going to end it here. After all, this this entire thing is a pure blind quote unquote quote blind unquote playthrough for someone who hasn't seen my other playlists already. So, meh. I'm gonna save. Uh, yeah, I'll just save like that. So, I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. And may the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Goodbye, everybody.